Welcome back to Glossop Wild Camping. Today we're not actually going to be wild camping. I thought I'd take you along with the journey today as I go to do some dry stone walling for a farmer that I know. And uh, we're working in a place called Moorfields, which is just about a mile away, mile and a half away from Glossop. Today is a uh, cloudy and very sticky, humid day today, so it'll be a sweaty one for sure, especially when you're doing dry stone walling. It's quite physical exercise as I'm sure you can imagine. So just a bit about the walling. I first learnt to do dry stone walling, probably about, what would it be? Must be 15, maybe even 20 years ago now. I think I was in my late 20s when I started doing it. I'm 48 now, so yeah, I'd be about right then, so nearly 20 years ago. I only did it for about just under a year. I found that the the winter was horrible the uh, the crew that I was with they basically would go out in all weathers really I mean if it's torrential rain we'd sit in the cars and wait until the rain clears and then get back onto the job and the crew I was with weren't very nice people to be honest with you the guy that, that led it and I first got the job with was great when I first met him he was an older fella very experienced dry stone waller um, but once a couple of other guys joined, one in particular, the dynamic changed and there was three of us, uh, four of us at one point actually, and the dynamic changed and he became an absolute knob to be quite honest with you. And that was the main reason why I didn't carry on doing it. Otherwise I probably would have kept it up a little bit longer. It's not for everyone though, it's not a job I'd ever want to be doing full time, I'll be honest with you, but I must admit today to be able to do the odd gap and uh, repair is a fantastic thing to do. It gets me out of the office, out into the countryside, a bit more physical work, which is great. So complete and utter antithesis of everything that I normally do in my daytime job. And I'm sure most of you guys will resonate with this, but we're feeling the pinch at the moment. My drawing work, which is what I normally do, has really fallen off over the last couple of months in particular and I've had literally nothing for about three weeks now which is really unusual I'm used to having peaks and troughs in the workload uh, being sort of self-employed well it's a limited company but I'm a it's just me working on my own in the company and uh, yeah very uncertain times we're living in so I'm it might well be that I'll have to take on more walling jobs to try and bring some bread in really. Anyway, that's enough waffle for now. I'll show you the section of wall we're gonna be doing when I find it, because that's the other thing. The farmer's gone away, so he's basically described where it is. So I'm just gonna to have to basically take a couple of photos when I get there to what I think is the right place and send them to him and just get him to uh, affirm that that's the right place. But anyway, as far as you're concerned, you'll see me at the gap and I'll show you what we're going to need to do and uh, talk you through dry stone walling. See you in a bit. Just as I'm on the way there, I saw these two walls on either side of the road, just to give you some contrast to the kind of wall styles you get. So this one obviously very neat and tidy. The stone is dressed and cut and you're able to get these nice regular layers. And then on the top there, you can see the coping stones on top, but the, the layers are very, very regular. You can get a wall very, very neat like this. This isn't the kind of walling I've ever done, although I'm, I hope it would be something I could do. <laughs> I'm used to working with this stuff. So these, oh dear, dear, that sheep, seriously. What's up with your voice? You sound like that teenager of the Simpsons. Anyway, <laughs> so the, the, the stone we're using here, this is millstone grit. In the dark peak, the, pretty much all of the walls here are made of millstone grit because it's the local stone. You can see this one is not regular. The stone is all over the place and you have to work with what you've got really. But so it, it's different, it's a working wall. It doesn't have to be aesthetically perfect. It has to be strong. And I'll talk you through 
the construction of it once we get to the wall. So we're just approaching what I assume is the gap. The farmer's put some metal fencing there just for now to keep the livestock in. So this wall is fairly high, higher than normal. I'd say about, I don't know, it's probably a good 1200, 1300 mil high. So it'll be a slightly higher rate because obviously there's more to do. So yes, we've got quite a collapse here. What normally happens is with these walls, either the animals push them over or more commonly there's substance in the ground uh, and the other thing that can happen is the grit stone when it gets wet and then freezes it basically gets pulverized and so if that happens with some of the especially the lower stones the larger stones at the bottom of the wall then the whole wall can tumble down like this take into account of course this wall's probably stood for 100 years or more so the first job is to basically remove all the stone from the wall take it back so that I've got a nice meter strip where I can move up and down the wall freely uh, as I'm moving the stone I'll sort it as well I'll put copers over there in a line I'll explain what copers are in a bit uh, so yeah I'm gonna have to start stripping it's gonna take a while to get this stripped probably a good, a good at least a good hour two hours probably to get it stripped before I can even start building and then once we get down to a level where I can see what I'm, I'm dealing with I can then ascertain how much I need to do usually I try and take it all the way back down to what's called the footings which is basically the very foundations of the wall so that I can really make it good and solid not building on anything that could uh, possibly deteriorate and fall over again so anyway while we're here let's have a quick look around you can see Glossop down there you can see Manchester quite clearly over there in, in the distance zoom in Thankfully there's a nice breeze up here which is brilliant, it's a sweaty one and I also you get flies and things as well so all part of the fun of bowling. Just zooming over here, this is, you can see quite clearly now the, the quarry on the top of Shire Hill. And then moving to the right, we've got yellow slacks again, you just see shelf benches peeping over there and then as we move to the right we can see where the cloud is starting to you can see the cloud over the top of the hill there that's lower shelf stones and then to the right of that higher shelf stones and the path that I'm actually on here at the moment this leads up to Blackmoor and you'll see one of my previous videos where I came this route over Blackmoor over towards Mill Hill So anyway, let's get this wall stripped. So before I show you the anatomy of the wall, here's what I'm using today. It's not completely comprehensive this, as the situation sometimes demands other tools. But obviously we've got lump hammer, which is generally used to near the end of the job, I find, uh, where you've got some rough old stones that you need breaking up into some of the smaller stuff to go in the middle of the wall. Again, I'll explain that in a minute. Got builder's line, that makes sense sometimes. I, I try to build by just by eyeball, generally. But sometimes, certainly when you're starting off at the bottom, it's good to put a couple of lines in just to make sure you're nice and straight. Simply just using this to uh, measure how much I'm building today and uh, charging accordingly. These are the most, for me, the most important piece of kit. Decent gloves. 
you've really got to get these these more he uh, heavy duty ones these ones are lined as well they've been used a few times but they've got a, a fabric lining in them uh, you can get cheaper ones that are normally red and they've got no lining there and that an absolute nightmare you get what you pay for those cheap red ones they've got no lining in and therefore your hands not only is it less comfortable but your hands sweat and you end up absolutely stinking they smell worse than than smelling smelly feet i'm not joking you uh plus they they do wear through quite quickly the red ones because this stone is very much like sandpaper it's very very coarse and gritty millstone grit obviously uh so yes you need to get some good high quality gloves the, the ones that are this you can get these in like blue and black um i think i got these from wix but uh yeah a good hardware store should sell them get the best ones you can these will last probably about i'd say about four sessions of walling four or five sessions of walling so i've managed to move the stone back now we've got a channel that i can walk up and down freely with and get access to the wall so here's what we're dealing with you can see a lot of pulverized stone around here which is as i said earlier why it's fallen down i'm going to have to strip a bit more of this out pull up pull out some of this sand and soil to get to the very bottom and probably need to put some new footings in here i've not measured the section but i'm going to say this is probably about four and a half meters something like that so here we can have a look at the, the wall that's standing and i can show you the anatomy of the wall so obviously starting at the bottom we've got some of the larger stones usually some of the rougher ones that are um taking the weight of the wall so you want those to be quite large really so something like this kind of stone here this quite a nice large one those are good at the bottom then you've got your basically your facing stones here um, various sizes but you're looking for ones where possible that have got quite a flat face showing on the outside inside the wall you see some of this smaller stuff this is called hearting and what you're doing is you, you're trying you're aiming to fill up every gap you can a really well-built wall you won't be able to see daylight through now most of these you see the odd crack I mean that's acceptable you can just about see light through there but it's really quite good um, quite a well-built wall this one as we are going through the wall as well you'll notice that trying to see if you can see any from here uh, right over there on this side you can see one a bit better so you notice you get every so often you get these stones that go all the way through from one side to the other to tie the wall together they're called throughs through stones so um, I've got a few stones laid out here you'll see just give you some examples so I've, I've pulled out some of the larger ones here so that one there that's gonna be a through these are probably going to be throughs as well this big one here is so big that um, I might actually end up breaking that into smaller pieces and using it as general facing stone uh, or I could get a couple of throughs out of it as well if I break it up right so this line of stones I've put aside here these are my coping stones they're going to go on the top of the wall you'll notice that the general shape of these is kind of like a half moon shape really and what we'll be doing we're going to be when we've got to the level where we can start to put the copers on you can see that the existing walls they're all leaning this away so i'll be starting this end and moving along over to here and then i'll tidy these ones up when i get to them so yeah that's the basic anatomy of the wall i don't pretend to be an expert on this in terms of actual experience I had that about nine months when I first started about 20 years ago and I've done it probably every couple of years maybe a few meters each year since then as and when people have um, needed it doing but since we're moving to Glossop and getting to know the farmer here I've been doing a lot more of it recently so you might be watching this as a, a dry sun waller who, who knows a lot more about it than I do and uh, please do feel free to point out anything that you see as erroneous but 
I know basically what I'm doing and I can make a nice strong wall. Everything I've built so far hasn't fallen down, so I must be doing something right. So I'll crack on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get those footings in now, clear up some of that mess there, get it nice and straight. And once I've got my me, me line in, I'll then be able to start to hopefully fairly quickly get it up. In terms of time taken to get where we are now, I started about, must have been about 10 past 10, quarter past 10, something like that. It's now 25 to 12. So I've done fairly well actually to get all that out and get to this point where I can see where I'm going with it. So anyway, let's crack on. Just another thing to mention here, very important. You'll notice that the wall slopes from wide to narrow at the top. We call that batter. The wall has to have a good batter for structural rigidity. The other thing to note is, what, is that um, the stones generally as well, are, they are, you want them to be flat or this angle. You don't want them at that angle because you've got to think about weather and water. So when you've got stones like this and the rain gets in, it's going to pull it into the wall. And of course in winter, if that water then freezes, well, you've seen what can happen to the stone. So there are a few things to take into account when building this to make sure that it's still going to be standing in 100 years time. Okay, we're starting to make a bit of sense of it now. We've basically got our line in. You'll notice that near the end there, that it's coming out to the left a little bit, but that's because the original wall has moved. You can see that both faces have, have bowed in, so I'll be correcting that. Once I get up to a height where that won't fall, so what I'll be doing is I'll be basically ramping the stone up from here and then just ramping it up up to there so that I can then know that that is going to be stable and then I can make corrections to where this is moved. So what I'm going to try and do is I've got a couple of nice big through stones here. I've got that one there and this one over here, that one's a bit of a, a weird shape, that one, so I think I am going to smash that up. But, but I think I'd like to get this big wide one here in the middle of this section of wall. I've measured it, by the way, and it's 4.8 metres, so I said about 4.5 metres, so it wasn't far off. But I'm thinking right in the middle here, pretty much where the wooden post is, I'm going to take some of these down here and I'm going to put that nice big through right across there and it'll just tie this section of wall in nicely and get a nice good foundation quite low down. So I'll do that now. See, as I'm putting on the facing stones here, I'm filling in the middle. Still got a bit more filling in to do, but the thing with putting in the heart in is you can use the small stuff obviously for the small gaps. Try and fill in as many gaps as possible is the aim. And what we're also trying to do is, when we're building, is we're trying to try not to have too too much of these vertical lines that go through uh, any more than one course. So we, i.e. where there's two stones like here, you want to be able to bridge those with a larger stone over the top. A bit like with brick laying really, you see the way that bricks are, are, are laid, it's the same principle. That's how you get the strength. So 
I've now got quite a few sort of smaller ones that are building up here on this row and I've managed to find this large stone here which is perfect to just bridge over and now we've got these stones are now anchored in by that large stone resting on top it's just approaching 10 past 1 and here's the progress we've made so far I'm concentrating more on the right hand side of the wall but you can see that big through stone that I put in earlier well the one that was lying down um, at the bottom of the rocks there the pile of rocks which was a bit of a weird shape I broke that up and made it more of a conducive shape as a through stone so as you can see that's tying that wall nicely rule of thumb really on this is try and get a through stone every meter or so meter meter and a half that's the rule I try to adhere to Often the stone you've got just doesn't allow that, you just got to do the best you can. A few other little rules of thumb. Where possible, if you've got a stone that's sort of this kind of shape for instance, you can have it that way around, but the best thing to do is have the longer part going into the wall because again, it's although it's not a through stone, it's almost like a half through, it's, it's still tying the wall into the middle and is more structurally stable than if you put it longitudinally so for instance this stone here you could if need be put it along like that because it might tie together a couple of stones underneath that's fine as long as on top you put something else going into the wall but where possible stones like that you're, you're trying to get them in that way around and it'll just add a lot more strength to the wall anyway it's time for me to have a drink and a little snack get back onto this just looking at uh, time I'll definitely get this finished today I'm going to estimate I'll have it done by half four five o'clock so you can see I've still got quite a lot of stone to put into the wall here there might be some left over but we'll see how we go those views. Sun's come out now. Not bad office this, not bad office at all. So it's 20 past two and we're getting there. Whether I'll be done by the half four or five o'clock mark I'm not sure it should be something like I think it should be something like remember that as the wall gets higher it gets narrower so there's less stone to put on however what I do find is that as we as we get in higher you're getting less and less of the small stuff thankfully it does seem there's quite a profusion of the, the hearting stone which I can use here so so far it's actually going quite well even though it's a bit of a slightly higher wall than what I've done um, recently we're making decent progress okay so we're just approaching four o'clock I reckon there's another probably another hour of getting it level and then another hopefully just about half an hour of coping so hopefully half five finish is achievable just looking down the line here I've not used a building line, I've, I've just totally eyeballed this and as you go up you, you can keep looking along and if there's any sort of discrepancies you can bring them in as you see them. So I'm going to put my builder's line on now between this level here and the level of the copper over here and that will reveal how much more I've got to build. It's usually more than you expect. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm, also, I've got a lot of small stuff now. There's the odd larger stone, like this one down here, which I could put right at the top of the wall, and that will also act as a through stone and brace some of the smaller, rubbly type stones at the top. I've got a couple more throughs actually down there. So the good thing is, once I've levelled it out with the small stuff, I can put a few more of those throughs on. There's a few more over here I can put on it. Again, it's going to be right at the top because you are limited by the actual width of the stones. 
but once you get up to the top of the wall you're looking at about a foot wide so some of these will probably start going in now actually because I'm not that far off so anyway onwards right I'm just about at the level where I could start putting these copers on the time is quarter past five so I grossly underestimated how long this would take has been a few months to be fair always add an, at least an hour to what you think the time will be so I reckon I'll be done here by absolute latest quarter quarter to six so I'll show you the end result when I'm finished so we're done it's 20 20 to 6 you can see the section I've done there I've left the string on top just to show you the extent of that section pretty pleased with it really it's couldn't have really gone much much better looking along here you can see my section is fairly straight the thing is that the copers always when, when you get to the point of actual, the actual wall getting up to height often you think oh it's, it's look, it looks so rough but then once those copes are on top the whole thing's transformed and it just ties in really nicely so yeah all done it's a case of packing up and walking back home anyway thank you so much for watching I hope this was of interest to at least some of you if you like this kind of thing I could perhaps do another one on the next one I build but to be fair it'll be just more of the same really but uh, thanks very much for watching and I will be back very soon with another wild camping video so please like subscribe and see you soon